guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Melissa. I am a stay-at-home mom to an almost two-year-old little boy, and am pregnant with my second baby, who's due in about three weeks. Today's video is a bunch of recipes that you can probably make from things that you can already find in your pantry, fridge, or freezer, or if not, easily get from grocery, drive up, or pick up since we're all staying safe and staying home right now during this quarantine time. My son is also awake, by the way, and munching on some snacks. So if you hear him, that's real mom life. I'm sorry, it's just how it is. This video has three yummy meal recipes that are really easy to throw together and quick to cook, and also a really great dessert idea for those of you who may be spending your birthday this spring or summer in self-isolation. So if you like quick ideas for meals or other mom life hacks, please subscribe and like this video. Let's get started with the chicken stuffing casserole. To start off, you're gonna want a nine by 13 baking dish sprayed with Pam. And then you're gonna take a package of chicken breasts. Um, I'm just using a pack of two large chicken breasts. This is probably about a pound to a pound and a half of chicken. And I'm cutting it into cubes. I suggest making sure your chicken is thoroughly thawed before doing this because if not, it will take a while to cook in the oven, even in these small cubes. So we're just chopping these up and throwing them into the casserole dish. Now I'm moving on to the sauce. So this is a cheese-based sauce. I'm starting off with two tablespoons of butter and melting them in this pot, and I'm going to gradually add in two tablespoons of flour and whisk them until they're combined. Then I'm going to add one and a half cups of your milk of your choice, gradually whisking in to make sure that we don't have any lumps. Um, yeah, make sure there's no lumps. I added about two tablespoons of salt, two tablespoons of pepper, and two tablespoons of garlic powder to this, mixed it up, and then left it on a medium high heat. I'm adding in about two cups of shredded cheese of your choice. I use mozzarella here, and then about a tablespoon of cayenne pepper, but if you don't like spicy stuff, don't add that much, okay? Um, maybe only a teaspoon. And then I'm taking this off the heat, letting it rest, and I'm emptying out a bag of frozen green beans and a bag of frozen corn into a mixing dish. I'm gonna pour in the cheese yummy sauce and mix them all together. You can use fresh veggie if you want, but I had frozen and most people probably do have frozen right now. I'm just gonna pour that over the chicken, spread it out and start on our stuffing. This is just the stovetop chicken stuffing. I'm adding in the amount of chicken stock that it says to, I think it's three cups or maybe two, I don't know. Read the box, I'm making two boxes worth and a stick of butter added into there. Um, it, you can just use water if you don't have chicken stock. I think it actually calls for water on the back. I just prefer chicken stock because I think it's more flavorful. I'm adding in two bags of it to the boiling stock butter mixture, stirring it around, letting it sit for five minutes uh, covered, and then once it's done sitting for five minutes, pouring it on top of the casserole, spreading it out, <laughs> just like you see here. And then I'm gonna stick it in the oven at 450 for 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. Like. So good. That was so easy, so delicious. My kid and my husband just like devoured this. Um, yeah, it's delicious. So you should definitely try this one. You can also use pre-cooked chicken if you want, and then you won't have to cook it as long um, for as high of a heat. Um, I just didn't have any because of what's going on right now. I had chicken breasts in the freezer, so that's what I used, but you can use pre-cooked chicken and it will be just as good. Okay, the next recipe is so easy you could do it in your sleep. This is savory ham and cheese French toast. Um, we had six pieces of bread left in the cabinet that were gonna go bad soon. They were getting stale. So I just made an egg mixture with three eggs, half a cup of milk, um, a pinch of salt, a pinch of nutmeg, and a pinch of sugar. And then I made them just like regular French toast you would. You can make it on a griddle instead, or you can make it in a skillet on your stove. You're just gonna cook them up like you normally would with some spray oil. 
And then once they are um, nice and crispy on both sides, you're gonna transfer them onto a wire rack on top of a cookie sheet. So this wire rack is just like what you would use to cool cookies normally. Make sure it's oven safe though. I don't want you coming after me in the comments if you melt something in your oven. So if it's not oven safe, you can just put it on the cookie sheet. It'll just be nice and crispy um, if you put it on a wire rack like this. If we had more bread, this probably would have made about 12 pieces of bread with that egg mixture, but we just didn't have any more bread. That's all we had at the moment. So that's what I did. Um, then I'm going to take out the Dijon mustard and spread some on top of each piece. I love Dijon mustard. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I only like it with ham and cheese though. I don't like it with anything else. Is anybody else weird like that? I realized I needed more. Um, and then I took leftover ham from Easter. Here's how to use your leftovers and put it right on top of that toast. You could easily put two pieces. I only put one and I wished later that I had two pieces. For mine, I added Swiss cheese on top. For my husband's, I added pepper jack because that's the only type of cheese he'll eat. Use whatever cheese you like or whatever cheese is in your fr fridge. Like, seriously, it's not a big deal. Then you're gonna put your oven on broil, on high, and you're gonna stick it in there and let it cook. Just watch it. Like, there's not really a specific time when it starts getting bubbly and kind of brown and crispy on the edges. That's when you know it's done to perfection Oh my gosh, I mean, I think this took me maybe total 10 minutes to make this whole meal so good, and I just want to eat this like all the time. Is it yummy? Oh, oh, I'm yummy. Oh, I'm yummy. Um, <laughs> All right guys, pina colada cake. Oh my gosh, so good. Here's the problem. I forgot to film making the actual cake. So you're just gonna take a white box cake mix, follow the directions on the back. Instead of using regular water, use coconut water in place of it. Add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a tablespoon of coconut emulsion. Now, I'm going to take a small box of vanilla pudding and you're going to add in a cup of crushed pineapple with a juice, a half a cup of whatever milk of your choice, and a half a cup of coconut water. I suggest using the coconut water and milk mixture first and mixing it in with your pudding mix before adding in the crushed pineapple. I didn't do that and I think it would have been better, but that's fine. Down for the icing. Oh yeah, put that in your fridge so it can set. Now for the icing, you need a softened block of cream cheese a softened stick of butter and you're gonna whip those together until they're nice and fluffy then you're gonna add in I said about two tablespoons of vanilla and then a teaspoon of coconut emulsion a pinch of salt and let me tell you something when you scrape this down do not stick your finger in it and taste it you will be like oh my god this is disgusting <laughs> like just just trust me don't do it I did it with uh, uh, gross yeah now you're gonna add five cups of powdered sugar, five cups. I know that seems like a lot, but you need it. And if it starts to get too thick, you can start thinning it out with a little bit of coconut water to keep yeah. that flavor in there. Um, you just kind of have to go by eye on the thickness. It's not really something I can describe except for like super thick toothpaste. <laughs> That's what I was kind of aiming for with this. This is not something that I sell in my bakery. This is just what I wanted to make for my mom for her birthday. Since, you know, everything that's happening, I just wanted to make a special birthday cake for her and she loves pina coladas and so I was just making this up on a whim. But oh my gosh, this icing, I mean, this is what dreams are made of. It was so good. I'm taking my cake um, stand and putting parchment paper around it before I put my cake on so that it's easy cleanup. That's just a little tip I have. Also, take a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag, just use a Ziploc bag. It's totally fine, like a gallon size. And stick it in a tall cup to fill it, your icing into it. It'll just make it so much easier, trust me. I took out the pineapple mixture out of the fridge and I felt like it wasn't sweet enough so I went ahead and added like a cup and a half of powdered sugar. I know I'm using a fourth of a cup so it looks like a heck of a lot but it's really not. I just didn't have a cup like measuring cup available. Um, 
And then after I mixed in all that powdered sugar, I put it back into the freezer. And now I'm just going ahead and using that piping bag to pipe on some icing onto the first layer. Going ahead and pouring on that um, pineapple mixture, I don't know what to call it, into the middle of the cake and then putting on the second layer of cake and using an offset spatula, I'm just smoothing out the icing that I put around the edges. Um, if you don't have an offset spatula, it's really fine. Just use a knife. It's totally fine. That was about half the amount of icing I used on the sides and everything. I'm using about a quarter just on the top and using my offset spatula, just smoothing out the top. I stuck that in the fridge to let it get stiff and then in another piping bag I'm adding a tip, a star tip. You can add whatever like fun fancy tip that you want and I'm putting the remainder like quarter of icing into that and I'm gonna make some fun swirlies on the top and around the edges. You don't have to do this. This is just like for pretty honestly. If it's not pretty does it really matter how many people are gonna see it in quarantine um, I realized uh, I need more icing which I had a little bit more in the bowl I hadn't really scraped it all down so luckily I went and got it um, but it was like just the right amount of icing <laughs> to be clear um, so I did all the fancy piping work around the border and then I took some sweetened coconut shavings or I don't know flakes is that what they're called and put them in the middle um, and then I took maraschino cherries and some crystallized pineapple and kind of went every other little swirly thing on top to make it pretty and decorated. And then um, I took some toasted coconut flakes and just put them around like the outside. So like if your icing is not completely smooth around the outside of your cake, don't worry about it. You're just going to cover it with decorations. So I grabbed another piping bag. This is not necessary, um, but I took some of my cherry um, syrup that I hand I make at home um, with some maraschino cherry juice. Tried to write happy birthday on top of the Costa Coconut. It all just went Bleh. So then I just, you know, made it decorative and it's really pretty. Oh my gosh, this cake. My mom said it was so good and she was so excited. So you should try this. I think it's amazing. And the last recipe is Mongolian beef with roasted broccoli and white rice. Guys, I cannot overstate. This was the like best meal. So good. It tasted like real takeout food. I don't even know. So first I'm taking a head of broccoli that I washed and I'm just cutting it into pieces and throwing it onto a pan that is lined with foil and um, canola spray or whatever. I'm adding some olive oil, garlic powder, onion powder, salt and pepper to the broccoli, and then I'm just gonna toss it up. You can do that all in like, you know, a mixing bowl and toss it up so it's all even, or you can just do it on the tray and not dirty another thing because we already have a ton of dishes to do right now, right? Like I swear, the dishes never end. and They're so much worse right now than they used to be. I guess because we're just constantly eating at home. I don't know. But just toss it all together with some tongs, and then I'm gonna, before I put that in the oven, start the rice in the rice cooker. If you don't have a rice cooker, get a rice cooker, but no, for real. I did about a cup of white rice with a cup and a half of water, set it on white rice and let it go to town for 45 minutes. Um, so while that's working, I am taking this beef Milanese, I don't know, how do you say that? But, um, and adding, uh, oh, I'm taking it and cutting it with my kitchen shears. You can just do that with a knife and a cutting board if you want, but I didn't want to dirty anything else. So I just used kitchen shears. It's easy. They go in the dishwasher. It's fine. I'm adding salt and pepper to the beef and then um, a crap ton of cornstarch. I think I used like half a box of cornstarch. Cornstarch works as a natural tenderizer for beef. So that's why I'm doing that. Anyway, it's delicious. Just trust me. Okay. Just trust me. Um, I'm like 
you know, mixing it all around with the tongs just to get it all coated. And then I'm going to maybe do something. Where am I? Hello, Melissa. Oh, I'm cleaning off the stove. This is a good mom tip. Just clean as you go. When I don't, it becomes a mess afterwards. So I'm taking my walk. If you don't have a walk, it's fine. She's still, it's fine. Um, and putting in like a layer of uh, canola oil in the bottom. And then I stuck my broccoli into the oven at 425 for like 20 minutes. In a bowl, I'm making a mixture of a fourth cup of, I don't know, what was that called? Brown sugar, some ginger, some ground ginger, some ground garlic powder, a fourth a cup of water and a fourth a cup of soy sauce, and oh, some chives. And mixing that all together. That's the sauce for later. Just put it to the side. Um, go ahead and cook up your beef strips in like, what's that called? The oil? <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, guys, mom brain. I am uh, struggling right now. Um, so when you cook this, it doesn't have to be all the way done because it's going to finish cooking with the sauce later. So, um, just set it aside. I know paper towels are kind of hard to come by right now. We really only use paper towels for when we're cooking things like bacon or like greasy stuff that we want to put down and let like the grease drain off. I highly suggest it with this because there is a lot of oil. Um, but yeah, cook it in batches. Uh, it didn't take that long because, oh my gosh, it cooks so fast. Especially if you have a wok, it cooks so fast. Insane. Oh, let me just clarify, we do like clean off our counters. We just use like reusable paper towels, like cloths, instead of actual paper towels. The only thing we use paper towels for really is to deal with grease from cooking. Okay, hope that didn't sound like I was disgusting and never cleaned because I think you guys know that I do clean. All right, so once all your beef is cooked, you are going to add the sauce into the wok and let it get all hot. Make sure you get all the good sugar that's down at the bottom out too because that makes it, let me just tell you, the sugar, I know. Sugar, whatever, it's bad for you, who cares? It's good, there wasn't that much in there, it's fine. Stir it around, let it get nice and like a little bubbly. Not like, you know, horribly bubbly, just you know, a little bubbly, like you can see a little bubble. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then once it's a little bubbly, you start to take the beef and put it back into the pan. See the little bubbles? Yeah. <laughs> put all the beef in the pan. All of it. All of it. I know it's like, oh my gosh, but is it going to cook? It's totally going to cook. You're fine. Just do it. Um, and then you're going to stir it all around once it's in. Just stir up that good sauce. Get it all covered and cooking and oh my gosh. I think um, at some point my husband took the broccoli out of the oven and I didn't film that. But <sighs> broccoli, oh my gosh, we could have easily eaten like two or three heads of broccoli just between the three of us. We all love broccoli over here, especially roasted broccoli with like the little chard on it. Mmm, so good. And then this beef, oh my gosh, this is going to be a staple from now on. Like, awesome. And all the stuff we already had in the cabinet or in the freezer or in the fridge and it was like we needed to use it so use it right look at that yummy oh my gosh somebody get me some of that right now look at the steam coming off that mm, girl yeah oh it was so good i ate the broccoli first pretty much as you can tell because but look look at that oh look at that char so yummy okay so i really hope that you guys try all these recipes they are so good. They're so easy and quick to make, especially now with quarantine. I know we're all sick of making food, but these are great. I hope you guys liked it. Please click the like button and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.